Rachel left work earlier than usual that day so she could get to her house in the country before it got dark, this house, which she received from her grandmother, was where she planned to spend the weekend, Rachel made sure she had enough food and water for a comfortable stay by knowing that the nearby town didn't have many stores, Rachel couldn't help but frown as she looked at herself in the rearview mirror as she drove her old Ford along the highway for a few kilometers before turning onto the country road, at 45, she felt old for her age, and her face showed signs of being tired and worn out, this was probably because she had been married for 25 years to an alcoholic who finally passed away from drinking too much, when Rachel was thinking about sad memories, she was suddenly stopped by a man who seemed to come out of nowhere on the road, Rachel slammed on the brakes, stopping her car just inches from the confused stranger, she was startled and didn't know what to do, when the unshaven man, wearing loose-fitting work clothes that made him look like a construction or factory worker, locked eyes with Rachel, her face turned red, the stranger broke up the stair off with a nod and then disappeared into the thickets of bushes that lined the road, Rachel breathed a sigh of relief and kept going, soon, she saw the outline of her house in the country, the once cute house looked worn down, with a roof that was at an angle and a chimney that was leaning to the side, Rachel sighed as she looked at how bad the property was getting, the almost collapsed fence that was still standing but almost parallel to the ground made her feel especially down, Rachel knew she needed extra care and attention, so she brought along building supplies like paint, nails, and brushes, along with the food she had in her car, she was determined to make a change, so she started with the fence and worked hard to make it look better. A low male voice startled her in the middle of her work. Rachel turned around and saw the same man she had seen earlier on the road. The stranger comforted Rachel that he was willing to help and that he was a skilled carpenter who knew how to work with wood, Rachel was thankful for the offer of help and glad that her work could be split up, Rachel paused and said but I have nothing to give you in return, on the other hand, I can treat you to a delicious dinner, that should be more than sufficient, especially considering that I've been surviving on nothing but apples for the past few days, the man said his eyes shining with happiness, Kevin's skilled hands did great things with the hammer and nails once they got to work, in less than an hour, the fence was back to its former glory, with new white planks added to cover the old ones that were rotting, Rachel said, now we can have dinner, and she let the stranger into her house, the man, whose name was Kevin, was impressed by Rachel's cooking skills, while enjoying another serving of potatoes, he told Rachel about his tough position and the fact that he was homeless, that being said, Kevin wouldn't say anything about what happened that put him in this situation, so no one talked about it, Rachel was paying attention and saw the stamp of the Correctional Institute on Kevin's overalls, she thought that Kevin had probably gotten away from jail and was trying to avoid being caught, even after learning this. She thought about letting him stay for a short time because she thought there wasn't much valuable to steal in her house, just dust and old furniture, Rachel. Wasn't sure what a runaway would be like but Kevin turned out to be a fun person to hang out with, over the weekend, they talked until late at night, the next morning, they did yard work together, pulling weeds and cleaning up the area, Rachel quickly realized that she had not had such a great time in a long time, the weekend went by so quickly, Rachel reluctantly went back to the city, where work and different household problems were waiting for her, she had decided to leave Kevin alone at her house for a week. During this time, she couldn't get rid of the thought that Kevin might not be telling the whole truth about who he is, she was afraid that when she got back to the country house, she would find it empty and in ruins, which made the week seem like it would never end, Rachel felt like she had been back to the town a very long time ago, she was so excited that Friday finally came, so she quickly left work and went to the country house, when she got home, she couldn't believe what she saw, she was. Worried about Kevin and the land, at first, she thought she might have gone to the wrong address, but a closer look showed that it was, in fact, her house, though it had changed a lot while she was away, the building's front was now painted a nice green color, the windows were sparkling, and the door awnings that used to squeak were now oiled and opened almost quietly, a new wooden bench and table had also been added to the garden, making it a great place to be outside, Kevin planned these. Changes using tools and materials that Rachel had left behind on her last visit, and he was waiting for her at the door, Rachel was so moved by her feelings that she lost control and joyfully hugged her friend, feeling warm and shaky inside, they stayed up late that night sitting at the table in front of the house, 
Kevin finally got the courage to tell them that he had escaped jail and was about a year away from being free. He said that other prisoners had tried to get him to escape by offering to meet up with them when they got out, but he chose to hide alone because of circumstances. After Kevin told Rachel what he had done, Rachel promised him that she would never give him to the cops, they didn't know it, but their talk was accidentally heard by Coral, a neighbor who was jealous of Rachel's happiness and didn't like how she looked. This neighbor told the cops that a criminal who had gotten away was hiding in the house next door. That night, police sirens could be heard outside of Rachel's house. And Kevin was caught right away, he got a longer term and was sent to the county jail with strict rules to serve it, even though he voluntarily turned himself in and didn't fight back, during this hard time, Rachel stayed strong, she wrote letters to Kevin and offered her support in any way she could, telling him she would wait for him to come back, about six months before the end of his sentence. Kevin noticed that Rachel stopped writing him letters all of a sudden, he got himself all tangled. Up as he tried to figure out what the sudden silence meant, Kevin's first thing to do after getting out of jail was to go to the address on the letters from Rachel, he was shocked when a stranger, the new owner, opened the door, then she gave him a folder and told him that Rachel had passed away, the stranger looked at Kevin's grey hair and told him that Rachel had left him something. Kevin started to cry as he opened the folder with shaking hands, inside was Rachel's will, which named Kevin as the person who would receive her country house when she passed away, Rachel knew she had a terminal illness but chose to hide it from everyone so that she would be known as happy and cheerful. Kevin now lives in Rachel's country house and spends every evening crying on the bench in front of the house as he thinks about the good times they had together. Kevin's illegal past is over for good thanks to this unexpected turn of events. And he finds comfort in the fact that they were connected, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story in a strange twist george and evelyn's first meeting happened in a place that no one would have expected years later just talking about this strange event would make the young pair laugh so hard they couldn't stop you might feel this way because george and evelyn didn't meet in a cozy cafe or a bar but at an animal shelter the day was special for both of them because the owners of the shelter had set up an adoption event to find new homes for animals that had been abused. It's sad that many of these animals have been abused or even left on the streets by their former owners, Evelyn and George went to the adoption day to find a pet, but neither of them knew how important that day would be for the other. It was funny that they both liked the same cat, Kitty, which made it hard to decide who would take it, since George got to the shelter first, he had a better chance, but when he saw Evelyn was upset, he kindly gave up saying he felt bad for making her upset, he told Evelyn, you can have Kitty, I'm sure she'll be very happy with you as her owner, she was thrilled and thankful for his kindness, before he left, George, who might not be an avid animal fan, suggested that he visit Kitty every once in a while, so he could meet the cat's owner, Evelyn, they gave each other their phone numbers and started chatting and calling each other regularly, after a week. George went to see Kitty and her lovely owner for the first time besides a big bag of cat food, he shocked Evelyn with a big bunch of scarlet roses, Evelyn spent hours getting ready for George's visit while George played with Kitty until he got the nerve to ask her to dinner at the best restaurant in town, to his surprise, she agreed almost right away, as if she had been waiting for someone to make that move, George and Evelyn had a great time together that night, and they didn't even know it was the start of their relationship. Because they both had to take care of Kitty, they became closer. And soon they were deeply in love, at first, Evelyn's parents weren't sure about George and thought he wasn't a good match for their daughter, but in the end, the couple's sincere love for each other won over Evelyn's parents, and they let their daughter make her choice. George, a young engineer, and Evelyn, a college student, chose to get married after being together for a year, none of their friends or family were surprised by their choice. They did well in their relationship because they took their new family seriously. Kitty became an important part of their lives quickly and became an official family member, the lucky cat had all the good things that her shelter friends could only dream of, like tasty food, a warm place to live, and even her own clothes. After getting married a year ago, Evelyn got pregnant, so the couple threw a party for their friends and family, Samantha, Evelyn's best friend told everyone that she would always be there for her during and after the pregnancy, Samantha, who worked as a nanny in her spare time, was very helpful to the new mom, Evelyn was moved by her friend's promise to help, 
so she happily added Samantha to their small family. Samantha did more than just babysit, she also took care of Kitty when the couple was gone, helped Evelyn with housework, and even went food shopping with her. Samantha, who didn't have a steady job or a boyfriend at the time, told her friend she was eager to help and stressed how willing she was to be useful, Samantha said in a sweet voice, why should I just sit at home and do nothing, at least I can be useful here, Evelyn liked how her friend paid attention to her and helped her, she asked Samantha to be the godmother for their future child after talking about it with her husband, Samantha was incredibly touched by the couple's choice, Evelyn's health got worse when she was 8 months pregnant, so she had to stay in the hospital, Samantha took over all of her friend's housework and cared for Evelyn's husband because her friend was sick at first, everything went nicely, George told Samantha, though, that she didn't need to help anymore because his mother had offered to do the housework, Evelyn got mad at her husband for being rude to her best friend when she found out this, even though Evelyn was mad, she didn't have much time to work things out with Samantha and George because she was about to give birth, there was one thing that the pregnant woman still didn't like, George's choice to not have Samantha as the child's godmother. But after Bobby was born, all the worries and problems from before became less important, it was clear that the young parents were totally committed to raising their child and worked well together, as time went on and Bobby got bigger, Evelyn thought about going back to work, she insisted on hiring Samantha as the boy's babysitter because she knew how hard it would be for George to take care of the family by himself. Especially since he had been working non-stop, even though George didn't want to do it, he didn't fight with his wife and agreed with her choice, Samantha was happy to take on the role of babysitter for the boy, especially since the kid already knew her, she was excited to accept the job offer in part because she had been out of work for six months and was glad to have any chance to make money, at first, it looked like everything was fine in the home of the young family, an unexpected problem came up, though. When Kitty started acting very mean toward Samantha, the young nanny kept saying that her arms and legs were scratched, which made George and Evelyn think that their cat might be having a hard time getting used to the changes in their family but the couple also noticed that their son's behavior had changed, he cried more and liked being held by his parents more than by Samantha, who he used to like being with, since this seemed strange, the young parents became more worried especially when they saw that little Bobby had a bruise and a small scratch on his body. When asked about the marks, Samantha said they were made by Kitty and that she couldn't calm down the normally calm cat, George and Evelyn didn't trust her answer and thought something was wrong. Samantha didn't know that they were planning a small experiment to find out the truth. When the parents put a security camera in their son's room, they wanted to find proof that Kitty really did hurt their son because they couldn't believe it. At the same time, they told Samantha that they were thinking about having their parents take Kitty and that the cat would be leaving soon. But George and Evelyn couldn't hold back their tears of anger when they watched the video, it turned out that Samantha pushed Kitty under the bed with a broom when she was alone, at first, it looked like she was trying to keep herself and the child safe from cat attacks when Bobby screamed. Samantha not only screamed at him but also hit him on the arm, this made the horror even worse, to their surprise. Kitty came out from under the bed hissing angrily to protect the child, even Samantha's. Swing of the broom couldn't stop the determined cat, who protected the child without expecting anything in return after seeing the shocking film, George and Evelyn did the right thing, the next day, they went to work as if nothing had happened, but they didn't tell Samantha, when they came back out of the blue, Samantha was waving a broom at Kitty again, but this time, they weren't by themselves when the cops got to the couple's house. They had a lot of questions for Samantha because she had been too mean to both the boy and the cat, the police chose to arrest Samantha for her horrible behavior after looking at the video footage that the couple gave them, the selfless cat, Kitty, was a big part of showing what kind of person the nanny really was, she had been acting to be caring and kind the whole time. Samantha had been planning to hurt George's family for a long time, and it became clear that she was carrying out her plan. She became even more angry, though, when George turned her down and told her he was committed to his wife, against all odds, Evelyn and George were able to save their marriage with the help of Kitty, their guardian angel Evelyn felt bad for believing Samantha, so she turned to George for comfort, he hugged her and kissed her softly, when the parents got to the crib where their sleeping son was, they were so happy they couldn't hold back a smile, while this was going on, 
Kitty stayed alert while curled up in a protective ball, always ready to protect her little friend. This whole experience had a deep meaning for the young couple, their baby now had a real nanny with a big, loving heart, not just a mustache and a fluffy tail, they felt safe knowing that Kitty was with them and that their family was surrounded by love and care. Above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.